Oh, I don't know when it's. It, I think it starts either this summer or this fall. I haven't gotten details and about it yet. Be knitting and it's called Knit and Crochet now, and it will be on PBS. All yes. Right. Oh, okay. You are absolutely beautiful. How <laughs> Thank you. The, I wish my mother-in-law was still alive because she did that all the time. Oh. I want to make sure she saw your show. Oh, thank you all so right. much. Have a safe trip home. Thank we'll see you, you soon. Have a good couple weeks till I see you. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good morning, and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 397. Whoa, uh, I don't know, I'm a little astonished by that. Anyway, uh, so glad you all could be here. I'm Kristen Omdahl. If you're new to the podcast, please feel welcome to say hello. I know all of our wonderful regulars in the community are saying hello now, and I'm missing all your names because I started over there. Hi, Fibro Purple Warrior, Carol, Anne. I saw Melissa and Grace and Angela. Carol, thank you for joining live. If I missed your name, I'm very sorry. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Lisa, Naomi, Christine, Melanie, Kimberly, Joe, Austin Craft Corner, Grace, Jane, Suloff, Constance, Angela, Diane, Terry. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for joining live, everybody. Happy Thursday. Glad you all could be here. Hope everybody's ready to have a great day. I had a couple of traffic run-ins on my bike on the way here this morning. Hi, Jill. Hi, Christy. Hi, Lily. So, first one. Hi, oh, Lisa likes my earrings. Thank you. These are the Kelly earrings from my book, 80 Handmade Gifts, an awesome book full of 80 handmade gifts that you can make. I have things from quick recipes, and crochet projects, knitting projects, sewing projects, and all kinds of fun things. Hi, Marissa, thanks for being here. Hi, Tammy. Yes, Lisa, you should get that book. You can get an autographed copy on my website, or you can get a digital copy on Kindle or Ravelry. Uh, you could also buy Amazon Prime all over the world. Don't know where you live. Um, if you have any trouble finding the book, just ask me and I will help you find it. So today I'm wearing that old navy dress that I talked about the other day. I said that the tank top that I wore, oh, the same print and same fabric came in a dress. And although it felt kind of matchy-matchy to buy both, when I stand up, you'll see why I couldn't resist. It has a beautiful fit and flare finish to it in the front. And it has smocking along the back where I feel like for a spaghetti strap dress, I felt comfortable not wearing a bra with it. And look at this beautiful skirt. How beautiful was that? And in that gorgeous red floral print, the colors are just amazing. So it's got, it's a red background, but then we've got pink and purple and blush in the gorgeous flowers, and then turquoise and sea foam and teal in the, in the uh, what do you call it, in the leaves. I don't know, it just, I love it so much. Love the color. And so now I have the same fabric and print in a tank top to wear with shorts or pants and the dress, but uh, I couldn't resist. I love it so much, and now you can see why. And the skirt's long enough that I was safe riding my bike in it. Uh, it's not too short on me, which sometimes with uh, full skirts like that, I have to be really careful that they're not too short. I feel comfortable. Yeah, and everything's on sale there, and they had coupons, and I signed up for their program, so I got more coupons. <laughs> I think what I like the most about Old Navy, at least over the years, not, I don't know how much it's true now, they have a lot of cotton and I do like clothing made out of cotton. Don't believe this is, but uh, in general they do sell a lot of cotton. Hi Catherine, thanks for joining live. Hi Shahida? Shahida, I think. Sorry if I didn't pronounce it correctly. And so I thought it was a good candidate for bringing out an oldie but a goodie, so I brought the Chantilly lace vest. I thought this might be a fun piece to style over this dress so we could play around with that this morning. And I think this is long enough to be a candidate for that knotting technique to make it a scarf. So I brought a shawl pin for styling, I brought one of my stretchy belts for uh, styling, and maybe we'll try a couple of ways to do it on a dress. Does anybody have any questions first though? Hi Jane. 
Hi, Victoria. Hi, Sanchelle. Thanks so much for joining everybody. Oh, and did anybody see the new video I uploaded last night? I did the Sabrina vest, the one that I wore yesterday. Uh, hi, Michelle, glad you're up early enough to watch. So the Sabrina crochet vest that I wore over that cute Amazon dress yesterday, I ended up wearing it into my video studio yesterday and I filmed the tutorial for the Sabrina vest. Uh, the right hand video has been uploaded and I, in the video I go over how to read the pattern, what the different sections of the pattern means, and then how to navigate figuring out what size to make, why you should uh, look at your gauge swatch, why, why that's important. Then I go over how to read the chart along with doing some crocheting of the motifs and show you how to join them together as well. So if that sounds interesting to you, hi Victoria, glad you could be here live. Um, Thank you, Jill. I'm glad you think it was well explained. So I think it's a really great supplemental to the pattern. You can download the pattern individually on my website or it's part of Layers Crochet, my brand new crochet book. Um, the video has been released for right hand so far and later today I will be releasing it in left hand for those of you that prefer to watch left hand videos. Um, oh, Tammy watched the whole video series for Sweet Clara Top. That's wonderful. I'm so glad. I hope that helped you with the pattern. I know it helps a lot of people. Video is a great supplemental tool, especially when you're learning how to read patterns and read charts. If there's a video supplemental to go along with it, it's so helpful because everybody learns in different ways. And so anytime you can approach something with an audio, a visual, a tactical, um, and video it really helps to really solidify the lesson so that you're learning it from all the different angles at least that's what i think <laughs> and that's my teaching style to try to incorporate as many of those uh shahida you love my voice oh thank you i remember when i was a kid remember when you used to record your um what was the thing called the answering machine i used to we, I used to cringe about my voice back then, but now that I've had to edit my own videos for so many years, oh gosh, how many videos do I even have on YouTube now? It's well over a thousand now. Um, I've gotten used to my voice, so it doesn't bother me anymore, but I'm glad you like it. <laughs> All right, I don't believe there are any more questions. I do, I did want to mention something, a couple of things about this before we do the styling. This pattern is available on my website. It's called the Chantilly Lace Vest. I have so many videos about this. There is a tutorial video on it so that you can learn that gorgeous stitch pattern, including the edging that I designed to mimic the stitch pattern. Isn't that beautiful, how they kind of match? I love, love, love how I made the edging match the stitch pattern. This would be an excellent candidate for uh, adding beads to your work. You could add a bead into that center cluster stitch there. You could add beads to the picots along the edge of these petals. Lots of different ways that you could add beads to this project, by the way. Also, I have made a sweater with this stitch pattern, and it's not been released yet. Also in Be So Fine Yarn, I will be releasing it soonish. I can't tell you exactly when yet, um, but I do have a sweater pattern in this stitch pattern too and it's so pretty good morning becky thanks for joining live so as you can see this is a very simple rectangle with two armholes in the center and how we start this is down the center there's a row of foundation ovals somewhere in the center here and then you work that direction even without shaping and that direction even without shaping and just add two gigantic buttonholes, so to speak, in the center to create armholes. And then because we start from the center and work out, you're able to be symmetrical on both sides to have that gorgeous edging. All right, so the reason we created armholes was to do this. So the first and obvious way to wear it would be to just put your arms through the holes. It's gonna be a little bit shorter in the back than it is in the front which would be a good time to consider adding a belt. You could add a belt to this. 
to give yourself a little more coverage perhaps and just to smooth out the lace a little bit. I think that looks super cute. I do think that this looks better as an empire waist than a natural waist, so I'm a little closer to my bust than my natural waist on this. Super cute. Now, one of the other ways that I love to wear this as a vest, can't keep my head in here and show you my body today. Maybe it's too low. Let's see if we could lift this up. I don't oh know, I might have it lifted up already. Let's see. We'll try that, see if that helps. Okay, so one of the other ways to wear it as a vest is to, instead of do it straight on, we're going to fold it once and find those armholes. Can you see that? So we have it twisted or folded or twisted one time, and then we hold the armholes. And what this does is give you an overlapped finish in the back and then it's long in the back again too. Stand up so you can see it. Can you see that a little bit? <laughs> Not doing well with this this morning. Don't know why, what I'm doing wrong. Anyway, so then you could wear it straight like this or, and I do like how the fuller skirt pokes out the back because of the seam in the back. I think that's cute. And you could also, and I think it's fine just like this, but this would be another candidate for belting. And then you have more control over covering it. I really like the overlap in the back. I think it's really interesting. And honestly, it's something you don't really see very often. So I think it makes it that much more interesting that way. Okay. Oh, let's stand up so you can see the lower edge. This actually ends up being a really nice length for the dress too, because can really see that lace edging well. All right, if I had a mirror, this is where you would want to check out in the mirror and make sure everything is even. I'm not getting it even right now, but that's not the point. I'm trying to show you the concept. Obviously, in front of a mirror, you could make it look so much cuter. Um, you could also use a shawl pin instead on any of these looks. The shawl pin could go right through like that. All right, then there's a bunch of other ways to wear it too. And that would be to put it over your shoulders and you can still wear it as a shawl. So if you just kind of ignore the armholes or even fold it in half like this. Let's see, let's try doing it full. Oh, you know what we could do? Let's do that half fold like this. By doing this first and putting it over your shoulders, you know what we're doing? We're covering up those armholes so that they don't get in the way of wearing it as a shawl. Oh, that's perfect. Yes, that's perfect. So then we're getting our full width. Look at how gorgeous this is. So by folding it first, we kind of mess up the armholes a little bit so your shoulders don't pop through. And look at how beautiful that is. As a... oh, I gotta back up a lot. really pretty as a shawl. Okay, and then obviously you could drape it to the side and just throw it over your shoulder, but you could also then secure it with a shawl pin or butterfly clip. You know those butterfly clips we love from my Amazon shop? That would be a good candidate here as well. Uh, yeah, and you, that was my next thing to tell you is that if you intentionally want your shoulders to pop through, it could actually be like a cold shoulder look as well. And this would be cute, not only as a shawl or a capelet, depending on how you tie this up. So we can do that with the shawl pin. So now that's really an unusual look. You don't see that every day. I think this could also be done with the belt and the cold shoulder. <laughs> It really is crazy how many different ways you can style things with lots of drape. It really is. Okay, so I'm gonna lift this up a little bit. Remember, kind of like we did with the Ruanas, you can give yourself a little bit of a sleeve. I mean, my goodness, it looks like a totally different top now. So I'll smooth this out. See how it looks in the back? A little different in the back, but you know, it's kind of cute, right? Hey, there's a time and a place for everything. And again, I'm not smoothing it out as much as I could. That's something you would do in front of a mirror. 
I think I could get it cut to come around the back more so it looks more like a fitted garment. It's just hard to do this stuff in here. But I think you get the idea. See, this one's overlapped. I just need to pull it over. I'll show you on the other side. The other side's looking more complete. Yeah, I think you could get this to come all the way around. Hey, that's pretty cute. Now, also with the cold shoulder, this one's really cool. You could, you could secure this down here and make it into sleeves and make it into a shrug. How gorgeous would that be, like for a wedding or something? So you would wanna either do some sort of a seam down here or buttons or something, and you could make this into, even if you could skip the shoulders or even sew them up if you didn't want them for a bride. Or you could leave them cold shoulder for anybody else or maybe a bride. And how beautiful would that be as a shrug? Just absolutely stunning with those large lacy sleeves. So the last thing I want to show you is that this has enough bulk. Now this isn't something I would necessarily wear with this dress, but this has enough length and bulk that we can do that knot tying technique that we love too. And wait do you see how beautiful this edging is going to look. So to do our favorite knot tying neck technique for a scarf, we're going to, so I wrapped it around my neck and then back down the front. We're going to twist this in half and then we want to pay attention to which side's on top and which side's on bottom. And whichever side you're working with, if that side's on bottom, this needs to come through the top. And if this side's on top, then this side needs to come through the bottom. So whatever it's sitting next to, do the opposite. This one's on bottom, so we'll come up. And this side's on top, so we're going to go down. Okay, so now we've got our gorgeous knot. And the best part of this knotted scarf is the edging. How gorgeous is that? Imagine if you put beads on there too, but it's pretty without beads. Honestly, you don't need them. But and you could zhuzh this up. So beautiful. So this is done in Be So Fine yarn. This one's done in colorway Chantilly lace, but as you know, I have tons of gorgeous colors in this yarn. And you can find the pattern. The pattern is also called the Chantilly Lace Vest. It's available on my website with charts and written instructions. There's video tutorials here on YouTube for not only how to make it, but how to style it as well. And I've probably even added more styling tips here this morning than even on that video. Cause you know how I get, I get on a roll. <laughs> But anyway, uh, so yeah, so if you're interested in making that, it's not difficult to make at all. Oh, Joe, yes, that would be amazing and be so fine bling. Yes, absolutely. I would want to do that for sure. If I was making it again right now, I would pick a color and be so fine bling. Absolutely, that would be stunning. That drape and then the shimmer too, woo wee, that would be gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's very uh, repetitive, so once you get the hang of your stitch pattern, it's actually quite relaxing to make, too. Hi, Marnie. Thanks for joining live. Does anybody have any other questions about that or anything else? Did I mess up my earring? The edging is pretty, Thea. Thank you. Yeah, Jane, or do dazzling just for the edging, or uh, dazzling in sequins for the edging. Absolutely. Yep, you could mix and match. You could do it in stripes too. You could do each repeat of this because it's kind of, um, the stitch pattern is not offset, it's straight on. Isn't it straight on? Yeah, so you could do it in stripes too. You could pick a couple different colors of yarn and do each repeat in a different color. That would be pretty as well. So many possibilities. Or color blocking. Do the center back in one color and each side in a different color. Um, Yes, I do have a solid black and be so fine yarn. It's called Raven. I have it in sporty too. Jane's hooked on dazzling. Me too. I love sequins. I'm dying to make earrings in be so dazzling yarn. That's and this morning I decided that I, I felt like I am missing three dimensional flower earrings. I don't know. I got in the car this morning and it's a thought that went through my head like, why don't I have any big three dimensional uh, flower earrings like in frames like this. That'd be cute. Maybe make it 3D on both sides. So no matter which way you're looking, you can see the flower. Anyway, just a thought. <coughs> Excuse me. 
I know I don't sneeze once. There's got to be two more coming. <laughs> Moose gal prefers glitter to sequins. I like both. Yeah, and there's a time and a place for everything. Uh, thank you for the blessings, everybody. I appreciate it. Wish I could guarantee that I was done, but I can't remember uh, any time that I've only sneezed once, so we'll see. <laughs> Uh, what else do I have in my bag this morning? Well, I'm still working on a dress. So I can show you that. This one's in Be So Sporty Bling in Colorway Moonstone. I don't think I got very far in it last night. I think I only got maybe one round done. So pretty close to where it was yesterday. But it's getting pretty and I'm excited about it. And I'm thinking about the other dresses that I'll be making now too. Oh, Lisa likes the idea crochet earring idea too. I am in the mood to make more jewelry so um, somebody wanted to know the stitch pattern for the crochet captain. I have no idea what that's about. I don't believe I have a crochet captain right now. Not sure. If I don't answer your question well enough here you can always leave a written comment in the video when it goes recorded and I am happy to see if I can help you there. Hi, Betty. Thanks for joining live. All right. Well, let's pick a quote. So I have all five issues of, whoops, I still have my comp card in there from yesterday. <laughs> I have all five issues of the Create, Share, Inspire notebooks with me this morning. And whoever picks a number between one and five first, I will pick a random quote out of one of them and we will, um, Oh, I can't see my screen. It went dark. All right, I think three might be the first one that was said. Okay, so we'll go with the third issue here. Let's see which beach is this. This is Little Hickory Beach. I shot this photo at sunset at Little Hickory Beach. Uh, Melody, good morning. Thank you for joining live. All right, so let's randomly pick a quote and see what it means to us today. Ah, I like this. <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> okay, this is by Heraclitus, which is a very ancient quote, but I think you're going to enjoy it. I know I do. Man is most nearly himself when he achieves the seriousness of a child at play. This speaks to me of enthusiasm, right? You can work hard. You can come up with the best plans in the world. But if you're not enthusiastic about what you're doing and you're not passionate about what you're doing, it's not the same. It's like black and white versus full color, right? I think that if you can get that bubbling enthusiasm and passion for what you're doing, like enthusiastic, like a child at play, I just think that you're going to be so much more successful at whatever you're doing. And when I say successful, I don't necessarily mean monetarily. I don't mean successful at your job, although I, that's part of it, but successful at whatever you're trying to do. Enthusiasm is the key to being good at anything. So let's read the quote again by Heraclitus. Man is most nearly himself when he achieves the seriousness of a child at play. So I actually took that in a different way. He's most nearly himself. So you are most like the person you need to be on the inside when you can find a place of enthusiasm. When you can get to that place where you're enthusiastic and as serious as a child at play, that's when you're most nearly yourself. When you're not focused on your problems, you're not focused on your fears, your worries, your future. When you can be as serious as a child at play, you're most nearly yourself. You're closest to your core personality. I like that. That's nice. And whenever we can get to a place like that by focusing on the good things, the light things, the fun things, what a different day we're going to have. Hi, Maxine. Thanks for joining live. Thank you, Betty. I'm glad you like the books. Melody likes that quote too. Yeah, I think it's a good, nice, light reminder for the day. They don't all have to be heavy. Sometimes they can be light too. Cherie agrees with the quote too. Yeah, it's a nice one. I like it. We're most nearly ourselves 
when we have the seriousness of a child at play. So nice. Thank you, butterfly kisses. All right, if anybody has any further questions for me, please feel welcome to leave them for me in the recorded version of the podcast. I get notifications all day long of those comments, and so I'll be able to help you if you need links or you need an, a question answered. So please always feel welcome to leave comments for me there. If you haven't had a chance to watch the new tutorials that I've released this week, we have two new pattern uh, tutorials released, one for the Annika, Celtic knot neck necklace, which you can learn whether you knit or crochet. And then yesterday's tutorial, the Sabrina crochet vest, a great tutorial video to help you get started on that beautiful vest that I wore yesterday. Uh, I also have thousands of videos here on my YouTube channel, but all organized in playlists. Those links as well as many more are listed in the video description below, including where to find my yarns and my books and all sorts of other good things. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed the sunrise, the sound of the waves. We didn't even talk about the view today. Anyway, I love the color of the water today. So beautiful. Thank you for chatting with me and everyone else here. Hope you enjoyed my demos. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.